Today we're, we're talking about Pennsylvanians. I've got two examples only in my collection. This is the newer one. It is from the 1840s. Take a look at the stock, the patch box, silver inlays. All in all, a very expensive rifle in its day and including the use of a more modern rolled steel barrel. This, this barrel was factory made. There were a lot of them in the hardware trade back then. And this is one of those. The rifling, take a look at the rifling end here. And you'll notice it was deep cut. Because it was deep cut, this thing takes a lot of powder and it can go several shots without reloading and without, or rather without cleaning. Now, let's go ahead and look at this one. This one, the barrel, dates back to the American Revolution. You will notice the seam right here. That tells you this barrel was hand forged out of a single iron billet. Now we've got plenty of ammunition for this thing so we're going to get it loaded. I've already put a 20 grain charge of 3FG black powder down this thing. You always measure your powder charge before you load. Because we got balls of slightly smaller size, yes, I said balls, I am going to double patch this load. Now remember, these, the patching is also a lubricant for the projectile so that it slides down the bore easily. And by cutting it off at the muzzle like this, Very gently, we get a nice even ride of the ball in the rifling. The rifling on this gun is very shallow with a fast one turn and 36 inch twist. With a twist like that on round ball gun, you have to use a very light powder charge, in this case 20 grain. Now this gun has no half cock notch because it was designed for, tar reworked for target shooting. So I have to be very careful about handling it. Now, take a look at this trigger mechanism. 
notice the double set triggers. Now if I push the front one forward, or the back one forward rather, we get, get the hammer to lay carefully on the percussion cap. Target down range. Pull the back trigger all the way until it clicks. As you can see, it works pretty good for 200 year old barrel. And it can do that up to 400 yards to be deadly. That was why the American Revolutionary Rifleman was very much feared. Small gun, one shot of Brown Bess ball can be converted into 12 of these little round balls just by melting it down. Very economical. This is the kind of gun you carried when you didn't have much lead available and you needed to keep active. This is the more expensive and newer gun. The barrel, like I said, was factory assembled, machine rolled. We can put this one together with a 40 grain charge. And it will work just fine with that charge. It's got a little slower rifling twist. Let me plug this. And takes a slightly larger round ball than the 36 caliber gun we just fired. Sorry. Sorry for the cut. I had to go find my ball sack. All right, we got here the correct round balls for this particular gun. Again, we use the greased rag. Yes, I said greasy rag. And I did say ball sack. Same procedure as before on loading and firing. Nothing had changed in the 40 years between those guns except the addition of percussion caps. And the fact that this is a factory rolled barrel instead of forged from a single iron billet. Again, this rifle had been reworked. To produce the results that it does. This lock is the cheapest lock I have ever seen on a cap lock gun. You've got to be very careful with it because of its very odd nature.
This has a set trigger mechanism, same as the other rifle, except less primitive. This, of course, is a patch box. You see these on many of the antiques. They get sometimes very de decorative. The rifle has silver inlay and tiger stripe maple stock. Yes, it is loaded and cocked and I'm holding it like this. And sometimes it doesn't work. We fixed our minor technical problems. We'll see if we can get this thing to work now. Try it one more time. Yeah, you can get it to work if you try. 